Hello everyone, welcome back to Saving Sunderland. We have had some issues since the last time we met. Injuries galore. Rasmus Nissen Christiansen, our starting right back, is injured for four to six months. That was five to seven months at the beginning of his injury, but of course we're already one month in. So uh, Bally Mumba is our starting right back for pretty much the rest of the season, or at the very least until January. Uh, Usman Diawara got injured. I can't remember how long it was for. He's been out for three weeks already. He's due to return with five to ten days, so like a four-week injury. Sergio Gomez has been injured for quite a while. He's been out for five weeks. He's got another three weeks or so of that to go. So one of our best players uh, has been injured for the past couple of months. And as you can see, we've just been picking up injuries left, right and centre with some people returning from injuries. But it has definitely affected our results. So in the first game following the last episode, it was a nil-nil draw away from home against Monaco. Pretty good result, at least in my opinion. They are definitely a side who are more than capable of competing with us on a player-to-player -player basis. So getting a point away from home in the Champions League is nothing to be sniffed at. Next up was a 3-0 away win against Southampton. Lewis Montanillo got the start today and managed to bag himself two goals up front in the second and 47th minute. Perez on the 39th uh, made it 2-0, I believe. We then went away from home against Benfica back in Champions League action and drew 1-1. It was a game where they did dominate and they probably did deserve the three points. Reese Nelson got himself sent off in the 87th minute, but a Chiarty apparently equalised for us in the 85th after they had went in front from a penalty from uh, Amin Guri. We then had a hugely disappointing 0 nil a weird draw against Cardiff City. It was just a game where we didn't really create any chances and any chances we did create, they weren't very good. And finally was the worst result of the mile, a 2-1 home defeat against Brighton. I believe they were sitting in 17th when we played them and they completely dominated us. Thomas Mounier put them in front six minutes in. Marcus Antonio leveled things up in the 80th minute, so I was hoping we were at least going to get a point. But I'll not lie, I did push for the win and we got punished for that. Esri Konza with the winner for them in the 86th minute. So that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We currently sit in 10th. Four wins, one draw and five defeats in our opening 10 games is not very good. And we will have to start improving our league form if we want to be competing at the upper end of the table. In terms of the Champions League, we are sitting in second place above both Monaco and Dortmund. Benfica taking the early lead uh, and we are playing Benfica today at home in the first game. So if we can get a win against Benfica, we put ourselves in a massively strong position to be able to qualify for our, from our group. So as you can see from the squad selection, it's a little bit difficult with the amount of injuries. We've got Josh Timon, Antonio and Diawara all starting on the bench despite being lightly injured. But we've still got a pretty strong side aside from Bally Mumba at right back, I believe. Uh, Jack Butland in goal, Mumba at right back, Perez, Badi Yashil and Miranda completing the defence. James Garner's coming in in the defensive midfield role as Marcus Antonio is injured with Pugier playing just ahead of him. Batista Maia comes in on that right-hand side. Not a position I often play him, but Reese Nelson's suspension and Diawara's injured injury means he gets the start. Kiyate in behind Avci with Unavar on that left-hand side. So they definitely dominated us in the previous fixture, but of course we were away from home. Hopefully we can turn that around and put some dominance on uh, Benfica ourselves, but they do have a fantastic squad. The likes of Gonzalo Ramos, Guri, Thiago Maia, Ronaldo Camara is always a fantastic player. Uh, we'll have to be very, very wary of their attack and talent. First highlight of the game comes four minutes in. We clear it, but Benfica win the ball in the midfield. Out of Lorenko on this left-hand side uh, for them. We pick it back up again. They work it pretty well between the defence and midfield. We're closing them down well, but we're leaving gaps in behind and Memphis is in. Good save by Butland. Another highlight now, 20 minutes in. It's Benfica once again on the attack. Memphis Depay whips it in. And Thiago Dantas is there back post 20 minutes in to get his second goal of the season. And put Benfica 1-0 up. We haven't been playing well recently. Um, and I'm not entirely sure why. The players, obviously, with the injuries hasn't helped. But even the main stars in the side who are still fresh and uninjured haven't really been performing. It is becoming a real concern. Highlight for us now, free kick. Batista Maia plays it in. It's cleared by Benfica. Oh, thank God James Garner ends up getting to the ball first before... Ugh, I mean, <laughs> we did get to the ball first, but Gonzalo Ramos still won it. Thankfully, his finishing was poor. Only one minute remains of the first half. We've been completely dominated, to be quite honest with you. We haven't performed very well at all. 
we're going to have to make some changes in the second half if we are to get back into this game. But hopefully, we might nick this ball and spring a counter, although it doesn't look likely with Memphis Depay picking it up, cut inside, going for goal. Jack Butland certainly made a meal of that, but he kept it out. So that's the main thing. Now we have it half time. You can take a look at the match stats for yourself. Not good. Changes required. We've lowered the tempo a little bit, gone slightly more direct with our passing. And we've changed a few of the player roles about. We made James Garner a support and deep line playmaker rather than defensive. And uh, we'll see if that can maybe kickstart us into trying to get an opportunity. And here we have it 65 minutes in. Sadetan Avci wins the ball on the left hand side. He kind of quite get the cross in. Thankfully, we retain possession through Badia Shale. We work it well down the left hand side. Chiardi at a Garner to Miranda overlapping as he should be. Nasi Univar picks it up on the edge of the area. Miranda whips it in. Batista Myers there. And Oliver Batista Myers' first goal of the season levels things up. 25 minutes to go. Some more of that, please. With only seven minutes or so to go, we are going to make some changes. Bally Mumba has had a dreadful game at right back, but he is going to have to stay on the pitch. Uh, our options off the bench currently pretty limited due to, obviously, the amount of injuries we've got. We'll bring on Montanio up front for Avci. We'll bring on Abdul, uh, Abdul Kadir Omar in behind the striker rather than on that right hand side for Kiartia. Um Kiartia has obviously been playing a lot of football due to Sergio Gomez's injury and he was a little bit tied out there. Looks like the game's just going to peter out at 1 1. I think after that first half performance, we've got to take that. Sunderland 1, Benfica 1. We move on to <laughs> a game against Newcastle United. So a few changes to our starting eleven going into today's game. The defence remains the same. The midfield two remain the same. Reese Nelson comes in on the right hand side after coming back from suspension. Batista Meyer comes in on the left hand side as Nasi Univar is now suspended for today's game. Sedet Nevchi and Kiartia remain in their roles. Newcastle United, massive, massive test. Not only are they our local rivals, but they are also in the Champions League alongside ourselves. And our paths have sort of become intertwined. So hopefully we can get a good result today and start turning things around. First highlight of the game, it's a Batista Meyer free kick. It goes just over the bar. 30 minutes in now, long throw by ourselves. Just cleared to Chiarty on the edge of the box. Avci tries to play it in. Oh, Newcastle do well to keep composed and get rid of it from the back. But we do win the ball back in the midfield. Miranda feeds it to Chiarty who finds Antonio. Reese Nelson does his man with his first touch. And Sarah in the box, Batista Meyer. Oliver Batista Meyer puts us 1-0 up 29 minutes in. And that's exactly what we needed going into the end of the first half. Great play by Antonio. Playing from deep. Being able to control it. Reese Nelson's first touch is sublime. It's a decent block by the defender. Twice from Newcastle. But he beats Rully at the second time of asking. Another highlight now. Miranda coming down this left-hand side. 40 minutes and he whips it in. Rully with the dodgiest of punches I've seen of football manager. Batista Meyer in the box again. Goes for the other corner, that's 2-0. Tell you what, we are actually dominating Newcastle. It's very, very nice to see. We've struggled against them in the past. Miranda tries to whip the ball in from the left. He can't quite do it. He can this time. That is a mistake and a half by the Newcastle United defence. And Sedetan Avci is the beneficiary from that. With his ninth goal of the season, Miranda doing fantastic work down the left-hand side. He loses the ball here. Wins it back after Jovan ends up dilly-dallying on it. And Sedetan can finish at the front post 2-0 Miranda with the throw in Avci knocks it down Pugier that was a hell of a save by Geronimo Rulli even though he was offside so it wouldn't have counted anyway um, Rulli didn't know that another highlight now just before half time Newcastle playing it about in the defence hopefully we can win it and we do Bally Mumba's long ball up Avci oh, oh dodgy dodgy Newcastle defence Antonio feeds it to Bally Mumba overlapping on this right hand side it's whipped in cleared to Pugier They've got a lot of men back and a lot of bodies, but we do manage to find our way through. And Batista Meyer is not offside. He gets his second goal of the game, his third goal of the season. And I think the few tactical tweaks we did before the game have definitely started to pay dividends. We've made our players a lot more supporting rather than attacking or defending, being involved in a lot more of the transition play. And it's definitely enabled us to hold possession a bit more and create better opportunities for our forward players. And there it is, half-time, Sunderland 3, Newcastle United 0. This is the best we've played for quite a while. First highlight of the second half comes 55 minutes in. It's a dodgy goal kick from Rully, and Avci's in behind. Avci gets his 10th goal of the season, his second goal of today's game, and he is loving life at Sunderland. It was Marcus Antonio 
with the killer through ball after a poor goal kick from Geronimo Rulli. Bally Mumba to Antonio, lovely first time pass. He beats the offside trap. It's a tidy finish and we are cruising, lads. This will be a huge result for us as well. I think Newcastle are currently sitting in 8th whilst we were sitting in 10th going into today's game. So being able to beat the side who is ahead of us in the league will probably overlap them and uh, get around 7th or 6th hopefully if the result still stands. We have a Newcastle United attack coming down this right hand side but we do pinch it and counter ourselves. Kiyatia feeds it to Avchu who's in behind once again. It's a pretty much mirrored goal from the one he's just scored he's got himself a hat he loves the live comms he doesn't really score aside from the live comms but that's his third hat trick of the season already he scored 11 goals so he's only scored two goals outside of live comms and well we can't complain about it they puts us 5-0 up 58 minutes in and now this is the game to put the smile back on my face we are going to get Avchi off the pitch now he's got his hat trick he can get his stand innovation we'll bring on Lewis Montenegro for him, Bally Mumba, I don't really want to bring on Hancha Olsen to be quite honest with you. So he's going to have to stay out there. I would like to bring on Abdul Kadir Omar. will take off Kiyatia and uh, Omar can play just behind the striker. Highlight now, Newcastle coming down this left-hand side. Bally Mumba holds him up. It comes to the edge. St. Maximin, John Joe Selvi combining. Uh, Vrisalco whips it in. Oh, let's keep a clean sheet as well, lads. Let's, let's go balanced. Bally Mumba with the throw in on the right-hand side. <laughs> well... That was a, a canny one too, that. He whips it in again. Goes to Batista Meyer on this left-hand side. He plays at the, uh, the edge of the area. I mean, Marcus Antonio goes for the strike there. Not only was it slightly ambitious, there was about three people in his way. Newcastle United attack. Jack Butland. What a save that was. Free kick for us. Nine minutes to go. Batista Meyer is the man to take it. Straight down the throat of Rully. And it goes out for a corner kick. We'll stick with this. Batista Meyer will be the man standing over it. He whips it in. Hayden Clears. Another corner now. Oliver Batista Meyer once again. Lewis Montenegro is at the back post. He gets his fifth goal of the season. He's been getting a lot more game time off the bench and with starts. And he's definitely starting to show the signs of a clinical, clinical striker. Back post unmarked completely. Sunderland 6, Newcastle United 0. And with that, we'll make our final substitution of the game. Batista Meyer is staying on the pitch. He's got the chance of a hat-trick. Pujia can come off. We'll bring on Matthias Jakobsen in the centre of the park. Batista Meyer with a free kick. Baddy Shale goes close. And with only one minute remaining, there will be one final highlight. Lewis Montenegro going for goal. Rully with a decent save. And there it is, full time. And I'll see it once again. Sunderland EFC 6. Newcastle United nil. Batista May with a brace. Avchi with a hat-trick. Lewis Montagnier with a goal. And that best performance of the season so far. Without a shadow of a doubt. And with that we do rise to 7th into the European places. We're a ways off the likes of the top 4 and stuff. So unless we're on an unbelievably ridiculous run. Champions League football might not be coming to us next season. But that's alright. We just wanted to consolidate ourselves in the Premier League. Have a decent season in Europe and see where we can go from there. Looking forward to the next episode. It will be our final group game in the Champions League, a home tie against Monaco, and away from home against Sheffield United in the Premier League. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed, actually, before you go, we'll have a look at the group. It's very, very tightly poised between ourselves, Dortmund and Benfica. It's going to be huge. And I'll see you at the next episode. But if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.